Hi there everyone. Uh, this video is being made on a um, vintage sewing machine called the Neki BU. Now the Neki was um, introduced in the United States in the early 1950s and it launched the career of a fashion model named Sophia Loren who, who had an acting career of course. But um, the Neki made its big splash in the US uh, primarily because it was the first home sewing machine to offer zigzag. And it was a huge deal. Um, the machines were made in Pavia, Italy. And this one, of course, actually says it proudly on the front. has the good housekeeping seal of approval. Like a lot of the sewing machines that I restore, this machine is all metal. It's all steel. And it does both straight and zigzag stitching. And, of course, it has a ton of attachments, and you'll see them uh, when I when I post the ad, there's there's quite a few. You can get even more if you want. They're high shank, and high shanks are easy to find online. But there's a ton that came with this machine. This machine came from the original owner's household, and I even have documentation so it showing the um, the uh, the original uh, you know guarantee and the the actual sales card where it has the uh, the purchaser's uh, information in terms of when they bought it, the date, and the dealership, and so forth. It's kind of a neat history that goes with the machine. And uh, the machine, of course, it has a bobbin winder on the front. It has a motor mounted on the back. Now, Neckies are, uh, they, they became famous in large part because they were made by an industrial company. This Necky BU is a domestic home sewing machine. Uh, some people will say it has industrial quality parts, and I believe that's true. You wouldn't see it in a factory necessarily, um, but you will find that the, the ability of a machine like this to sew heavy material is pretty incredible for home projects. Um, you can sew leather with it. You can sew heavy upholstery. And the Neckies, for whatever reason, are very um, collectible uh, amongst people who, are, who have boats, people who like to do sail repair. So, you know, sail canvas is pretty heavy stuff. And uh, I'm guessing, you know, it has a 1.1 amp motor, very powerful, but no more than the other machines I restore. I suspect part of its power and part of its sort of uh, reputation for toughness may come from the weight of its drivetrain as well as the uh, hand wheel. I've noticed that the hand wheel is a lot heavier on the Neki than it is on some of the other machines. And so I think that has something to do with it because its piercing power is amazing. It uses um, class 15 bobbins and it has four or five of the original beautifully uh, machined aluminum bobbins, but you can get, you can use any class 15 bobbin in it. Um, and it has uh, another feature kind of to point out about the Neckies. I, I've restored a few of these before. I don't come across them very often, but when I do, I always uh, try my best to get a hold of them because they are amazing. The Necky had a feature, and I don't know if it'll show up here, but there are little spring-loaded uh, covers for the oil holes. And so when you oil it, you put your spout in, you press down, you put the oil in. It was just a way to keep dust out of the oil holes, which was just a little extra touch that they had. Uh, two simple controls on the machine. Of course, you have stitch length control, and you... Um, of course, you have uh, reverse back tack, and then you'll have a zigzag control. Right now, I have it set on zigzag, and then I'll uh, be adjusting that to go down to straight stitch at some point. But anyway, just wanted to show this to you. I uh, was checking out the bobbin winder and tested that today. Um, but I wanted to, uh, other than talking about the machine and showing it so, I wanted to mention about the cabinet. I think the last Necky I had like this, I probably listed for around 275 or something like that because Neckies uh, command slightly higher prices than the other zigzag machines that I restore. This machine has an unusual cabinet. Uh, it was, when, when you went into a sewing store back in those days, you had a ton of choices and you had, you know, the basic tables. Tables were extra, they were very expensive, and I never really knew how expensive they were, I just had heard that they were. And the paperwork that you'll get if you purchase this machine has a uh, it has the owner's manual, which is nice to have the original, and then it has a bro brochure that was like an accessory sales brochure, and it has prices that were written in pencil by presumably the salesperson on different tables. And there's a table that's about the same level of fancy as this one, and it was selling for over $300 in 1951. That was a ton of money. And that, didn't, that was not the machine, just the cabinet. Uh, this cabinet is gorgeous. It's a mahogany cabinet, and it's unusual. 
um, it has a false front. When you see it from the front, and you'll see this in the photos that I post, it looks like it has three drawers, but in fact you pull the drawer <coughs> handle away and it's actually a chair. So the stool is built in to look like uh, like cabinet drawers. Really neat design. I think this was may have been an Italian design cabinet, but in any case the machine is set up uh, uh, to sew and I'm going to do a little stitching for you now. I'll start with some zigzag. Um, some of the best zigzagging you'll ever see on a home sewing machine comes from Neckies. And I'm not sure why, because uh, it was copied by, by the Germans, by the Japanese, and eventually Singer got into zigzag as well. And I'm just running it. It's very quiet for a uh, class 15 machine. I'm going to go backwards here. And I can do a, you know, a very fine or short zigzag, or I can make it long. So I'll turn around here. I'm going to show you guys the stitches in a moment. Um, and right now I've got it on a fairly wide zigzag here for a 1950s machine. I'll speed it up. And as you can see, they can, they can sew really, really fast. Uh, the Necky Company, again, made industrial machines. <clears throat> and then when they came out with their uh, home machine, they spent a lot of uh, effort in what I consider over-engineering because the body, just the body of this machine has a much heavier casting than a lot of the machines that would come later from Japan. I'm not sure why, um, but that's just that's just what they did. That's how they produced it. And uh, it, it's the only thing I can think of to explain why people specifically today will seek out this machine and this model of machine. They usually come in black. Occasionally you'll see them in green, but usually they're in, uh, in a black color. They will say Neki BU, as this one does. This was one of several versions of the machine. Then they would come out with the Neki BU Nova, the Mira, and so forth. But um, again, one of the best machines, if you folks sew slipcovers, if you sew you know, boat sails or heavy drapery, it's, it's, it's really great. In fact, this fabric I have here is drapery fabric. In fact, I'm going to pull this out. I've got, I think I've got four layers right now. It's sort of a lightweight fabric but with a liner. Let me show you the stitches though before I do anything else. So you can see here, you see both the short and the zigzag as well. Um, I've got two, colored, two colors of thread here. So I'll turn it over and I sh this should give me eight layers of fabric and the machine will not, it won't even notice it, it'll just sew right through it. Um, let's see, let's go back to straight stitch. Changing the setting on this thing is extremely easy. You turn a little uh, screw here, you come over, and you bring her back, and you have straight stitch. It's, it's um, kind of uh, very simple and in a good way. So let's see what she does as I come back. Now I've got, let me get a long stitch. Long straight stitches are one of the best ways to kind of show people how a machine is sewing. Um, if you ever, there we go. If you ever um, see a machine listed and and the seller says that it runs, that means that the needle bar might move. That doesn't mean it sews. A sewing machine has a lot of settings that need to be checked, uh, not by you, but by the person who's who's uh, inspecting it. You know, if it's it's been sitting a while, it needs maintenance, and. Um, once those things have been taken care of, the machine can sew beautifully. But if you buy a machine and no one can tell you if it's been serviced and they can't tell you what they did, you really want to look at it closely because it's one of the reasons why you might buy a machine from someone uh, that restores and services them the way I do. There are other people that do this, but um, it's something you definitely want to look at. Let me come up and I'll get, get us a short stitch here and then I'll take this out. You guys can see this as well. Um, very nice, quiet operation. I really like the way Neckies sound. And again, this is a Necky that was made in Italy. Later, they closed the Italian factory <clears throat> sometime in the late 70s, early 80s, and they went to China. So a new Necky machine is nothing like this. Uh, not even close. So now this is eight layers. And that's, and that's blue on blue fabric. Sorry, I had the blue thread already in there. And you'll see, the, of course, the long and the... Let's see here. You'll see the long and the short straight stitch. Let's come over to this side here. Hoping that the, uh, the white will show up a little bit better for you guys. The lighting here is not the greatest today. and 
But I want, there we go, I'm trying to get it to focus. You can see that beautiful micro dot, that short stitch was just gorgeous. Um, and I'm going to sew a little bit of leather in a moment, but uh, before I do that, I want to run through. I uh, don't have any canvas today, even though this machine is really well known for sewing it. But <clears throat> I do have, this is something you guys see me show. This is a cargo pant, and it has um, lots of heavy seam folds, right? Similar to what denim might be. So I was looking for something really dense, like you might have with canvas, so you can see me sew this. So I've got a pocket, I've got a seam, I've got a pocket seam, I've got a lot of seams going on here. So I'm going to find a place where I haven't sewn over yet and make sure I don't hit the button. I'm going to come through and you guys are going to see me sew this, the seam here, and then the pocket seams. And we'll see if the machine uh, takes what I give it. Um, I have a size 16 jeans needle in here right now. Let's get to long straight. Gonna get under my presser foot here. There we go. The one thing you might notice that I'm doing right now, I'm gonna I'm gonna lighten the pressure on my presser bar because a lot of times you, you have to control that pressure when you're trying to go over something pretty darn thick. And it did it which not only did it go over seams, but it went over a pocket and a seam. You might not ever, ever, ever even sew anything this ridiculous, but again, I wanted to sort of, you know, kind of push it to the extreme so you guys could see the, um, you know, that's, a, that's amazing. I mean, the density of one, two, three, you know, I don't know how many layers of fabric this is. I would have to count up how many times it was folded over. But the reality is it did it, and even on the other side, you'll notice that the stitches are true. It didn't lose tension even in that, you know, is an extreme example of what you may never use the thing for. But again, I wanted to do that not to, to, um, to exaggerate at all, but to give you an idea of just the power that this machine has. And it's something, you, it's hard to appreciate sometimes when you're sewing linen or like cotton. So you think, well, okay, it's a sewing machine, but this one is really tough. And uh, a lot of my customers like to sew leather. And so I'm going to sew, this is probably, let you see the thickness here. And I'm going to put it, now I would normally use a leather tip needle. And uh, today I have a jeans needle in, but again, uh, the machine should handle it just fine. And we're going to... And I'm sewing through the leather, and it's feeding just beautifully. Sometimes you'll want to use a roller foot when you're sewing leather, um, because leather can be sticky. Some of the leathers I do, they roll right through, and then other leathers are fussy, uh, not because the machine can't pierce them, but because the leather kind of gets stuck under the foot because of a friction. It's a friction issue. So uh, if that ever happens, you can use a roller foot. Uh, I'm going to tighten my pressure back down a little bit here. And I have a fairly, let's see what length stitch I have. I'm going to keep the stitch length long. Let me come over here. Because I <clears throat> I don't want a short stitch length in leather. But let me, let's come back over to zigzag for a moment. And I'll let me bring that needle up. And I'll show you what the machine does when it's um, zigzagging. I don't know if you'll zigzag with leather, but you certainly can. And I'm hopping right down, zigzagging. Let me get over here where you can see it. I was covering another seam there. Yeah, that's good. So again, you know, first of all, let me show you guys. That's a really beautiful seam and some pretty decent, decent weight leather. Um, and this blue stitch is the one I just did. And then you'll see it's a long version of the white. And let's find the find for you where I did the, uh, let's see, right here. Yeah, you can see, here's the stitch again. Here's, here it is. I want you to see the blue zigzag without it covering because I, I got it mixed in there. But as you can see, it's, you know, it's that's, that's a powerful machine. And 